Good morning. Welcome back to the channel. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button for more videos on uh, what I do during my working week. A day in the life of a plant mechanic, if you will. Um, welcome back to the channel. Today, I was going to go and service a couple of digger. Um, and then at quarter to eight, I had a phone call with a breakdown there that I've just called into. Just a, what was that? Half an hour. Um, that was a quick hitch fault on a DX19. There was lots of people about and I get shy with the, with the old camera. <laughs> so anyway, I'm heading now to another breakdown, a DX27. I'm hoping it'll be straightforward because um, I'm booked in at a place to do a service uh, at two o'clock, but it's, uh, it's a couple hours drive for us. So I'd, uh, I'd like to get that scene to fairly sharpish. 10 o'clock now. All right, on the top of Cumbria, look. What a time to be alive. Bit of, bit of, bit of snow on the hills over there. Lovely job. Anyway, Carlisle is in that direction, which makes Scotland in that direction. And then, I don't know if you can see, but there's a slip of water up there. That's the Solway coast. Basically, Magical Mystery Tour update. I'm heading now in, mm, where's that? Dalston's there. So I'm heading sort of bearish. Handy when you can see where you're gonna be going. Right, let's go. You were in a yard full of yellow diggers here. That's, that's just not right. <laughs> anyway, I'm at the orange one. Um, it's leaking oil. First I thought it was down here, but now that I've started it, I see it's coming out of here, look. That's a nice easy fix. Nineteen. You can actually see the o-ring poking its head out, look. So what will have happened is that'll have come loose. In fact, it is loose. <laughs> Don't even need a spanner to get that out. There you have it. So go and get a, that'll be a quarter O-ring. Pop that on it, check the oil level. Drops a peach. They've even taken the cover off for us. I might let them uh, put it back on. I wouldn't do that. Fire that in. Check the oil level. We only like easy jobs on a Friday. Shut this door. For the two and a half minutes I'll be in it. Two and a half seconds. Right, I'll uh, I'll shove the boom out to the point where we can check the oil level. Can. Might need to do some manoeuvring, hang on. There you go, that's how you check the oil level. Even the picture tells you. Right, where's the uh, where's the level glass? Ha! Hundreds in it. That's good. Noticed it leaking at the right time. Okay, I'll go and get a couple of 13 mils and we'll get this whizzed back together. Right, now I need to uh, go back to the yard and uh, what I should do is pull the trailer out. I've got the trap pin press on the trailer. Just done for coming in here or not? Hey, I've got the trap pin press on the trailer which I need for Monday. I need an early start on Monday, so I'll take that home with us tonight, um, but I'm not gonna trail it all the way down to the next job and fetch it all the way back, because that would just be wasteful of diesel. Um, but by the time I'm getting back up the road, I have a feeling the yard will be locked up, so I'll leave it on the front, and then I've got keys for the main gate, and I can help myself. And it can sit on my driveway at home. For the, uh, for the weekend, 
Yeah, I've got a big track job to do. Don't see me doing many track pads and chains. Normally a job and we are doing it. We're doing it in the workshop to second hand machines. Anyway, I'll talk a bit more about that job on Monday. Add a bit of suspense. But anyway, that's, that's the reason why I'm going back to the yard now. God, that was lucky. Um, I have been all around the building <laughs> doing stuff. I was through in the office there and uh, doing some paperwork. Um, and then the salesman was in at the show stand that we've got in there. Could you come through and have a look at this for us? Then I was through there and then we were out in the backyard. Uh, and then I went back through to the front thinking that I parked my van over there and I hadn't done, I'd left it here. Engine was running, but I'd been in the container and I just spotted that my van keys weren't there. So I've been back around the bloody building trying to find my van keys, the joy of having. And please, I noticed that I got down the road and then stopped the van and not been able to start it again. The joy of filming uh, keyless ignitions, isn't it? Anyway, what are we on? Quarter past 12. I am heading down to. To your look. Oh, I'll just hang on. Yes, we're heading down to Accrington to be more accurate. Braxton. Bra Bra Baxenden. We're going to the car breakers yard. To have a play with a big 225 and a car dismantler. So that'll be interesting. Um so yeah, we he didn't want us down there till about two o'clock. Um I would have set off ten minutes ago if I hadn't lost my keys. So I'm going to be there now for 11 minutes past two. I'm going to be late. Anyway, uh, yeah, we're going to give the uh, the 225 a right good service. Here we are. <laughs> I tell you what, you wouldn't expect to find a bit like this down here, would you? <laughs> Hellfire. Let's go find us a car breaker to go and service, shall we? Brax. Bax, I say Brax, it's Bax. Baxenden car breakers. I think I've been saying Braxenden. Anyway, here they are, look. <laughs> We're just waiting for this van to move out of the way and then we'll have uh, risk assessments, site permits, and all that stuff to sort out. <laughs> These are the sort of spots you want to be coming to to service. You can just turn off and get on. Apart from when there's a van in the way. Right, so if you haven't guessed already, we are at Bra ba Baxenden. Baxenden. I keep saying Braxton. I don't know why. A but lot anyway. of people actually say Baxton, don't they? Yeah, yeah. A lot Baxton. of people Baxton. 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 So uh, <laughs> we're here with the lads from Baxenden Car Breakers. Um, they got in touch a week or two ago to uh, get me to come down and cast my eye over at this beast. Now this is the first time I've ever done anything with a car dismantler um, and yeah I'm, I'm actually quite impressed. Um, we've just had a quick look over it and done a bit for their channel. Um, the machine itself is actually it's pretty square and um, the, the body works in good order uh, especially you know if we're working in a confined space like this with a big machine with tail swing uh, yeah they're, they're doing well to look after it the way they have going to be doing a thousand hour service on this um, so we'll do engine oil fuel filters um, hydraulic filters we're going to do the gearbox oils slew gearbox oil we'll have to get that started pretty sharpish and um, because that's the one that takes a lot of time and um, we're just going to give it a good check over for them uh, check pressures etc so yeah if you haven't uh, visited these guys on YouTube it's Baxenden car breakers and uh, as you can see, we're in a breaker's yard and uh, that is their business. Right, he's got us the arm stretched out because uh, he's saying that he um, gets a lot of oil leaks in this area of the machine. So he's had a lot of, uh, lot of oil leaks. So we're going to just check. Oh, do you see one now? Look, is that oil or snow? Melted snow. That's oil. Hey, well, I, could, could, uh, I could spend ages going over this machine. Um, so we'll open this dot, lift this lid. Uh, 
there it is DL06 this is the same engine as what we've got running in the latest generation of machines the only difference is after that turbo pipe there really um, even more so in the dash 7 diggers um, because the dash 7 diggers don't have any EGR just like this one does uh, it doesn't have any EGR um, so yeah that is the LO6 right um, let's have a look in the pump bit and see what we've got got a nice big pump must admit when he was working the machine earlier to stretch the arm out it was just humming away um, there wasn't any unusual noises pressure sensors are plugged in so we should be able to check the pressures that was something that he was wanting doing just making sure everything is uh, running as it should we've got our trusty water and fuel filter here this is the older type with the with the smaller ball on it not quite as service friendly as the latest machines um, the filters are sort of a bit more scattered um, because we've got the water and fuel filter here <laughs> all the way up here we've got the primary fuel filter um, and we don't have a remote oil filter it's actually mounted on the block which is uh, well it's a treat to when you unscrew it one of them ones what gets you wet you know hmm. some bit of gear that though isn't it it is power hand i'm pretty sure these car dismantlers are built in Dumfries or just outside of Dumfries uh, same manufacturer do you remember that log grab with the uh, saw attachment uh, same manufacturer as them so these go all over the world I've seen these on machines in Australia and New Zealand and all kinds right not me I haven't personally been to Australia and New Zealand but uh, seen online right you did say this uh, belly plate's had an accident and you can see a bit of black oil as well so we'll have a look yeah so we can see a bit of oil about engine oil that is um, but I would imagine it's off this filter head or filter I bet you if I put my rag on that now and it's tight like quite often the kind of <laughs> weep oil and you normally when the dust sticks to it you get a fluffy filter but I've not seen one as bad as that for a little while well, it does look like it's coming from a bit further up I'll go and get my torch anyway and just see where that might be coming from so as I said before the machine is majority of the time fairly stationary um, but they were concerned because of the amount of slewing that they do what the slew gearbox oil looks like um, it's sort of we'll see shortly because when you fill the slew gearbox oil obviously you fill this bit of pipe and this bit of pipe the gearbox oil won't really mix in with the what's in the pipes at the moment it looks lovely and golden but we'll come back in 10 minutes time and see how it looks i think i'm going to take the filler neck off and uh, that'll help it run out a bit quicker okay while well, that's draining out because I want to use them drums for the engine oil as well we get these hubs draining what do we think the oil's going to look like coming out of here I think it'll be all right but it should also I would imagine have a bit of color about it just been because it's been sat it might not have been changed for a while we'll see have I got the right allen key it's usually that yeah it's gonna go look there we go right okay what do we think the oil's gonna look like coming out of here i think i already know the answer because i've got that top bung out <laughs> um yeah let's have a look then i'll just do it with me and it's all over my gloves and i'll smell it for the rest of the service let's have a look oh that's ready for a change <laughs> lovely right we'll uh, get that one out I've, they were very very tight very very tight they were to had to hammer me yeah uh, hammer me socket in always if it doesn't feel like it's gonna go 
always go and get your hammer and that just uh, sort of shocks it off a bit and gets it going again two under this I'm going to drop my phone in the in the drink okay so this side the oil looks a lot cleaner um, however there's either too much oil in it or the hydraulic motor is put in hydraulic oil into the uh, into the gearbox because uh, that has filled up very very quickly it's come out at that sort of angle so I reckon it was at least up to here um, yeah that gearbox should fill that and no more but I'm gonna have to go and empty that now <laughs> oh it's miserable out there proper miserable <laughs> <laughs> I'm hiding underneath bigger. I'm just draining the engine oil now. Um, I've got my slew gearbox going into that tray. Slew gearbox and the final drives take around the same amount of oil. It's between four and five litres, so I've already dropped a lot of it into here. That's about at the pace that it comes out at normally, so I'm not too concerned. Um, yeah. I don't want to go, don't want to get back out from under, you know. <laughs> and so I've drained all the engine oil out and it's stopped raining again. Happy days. Um, about 27 litres of engine oil in here and I've just loosened that filter to, before it was really pouring out, I've just let it kind of finish running out. We'll get that spun off and get the first genuine filter fitted. <laughs> um, I will be using my grips to just give it a gentle nip um, just to try and stop it leaking again. Uh, that's generally what I find cues the job, just a bit more of a nip than hand tight for those filters. The slew gearbox oil, it's still running ever so slowly. Yeah, it's the first oil to drain and the last oil to refill. Um, you don't generate an awful lot of heat unless you sort of service the machine straight after a day's work of spinning round and round so yeah i'll get this one spun on okay that is the slew gearbox drained finally um i've just put the bung in it although it'd be the last oil that i probably put in the machine at the end of the service um if i don't put the bung in now while i'm under it yet I'm, i'll probably forget i'm not gonna lie i'll be pumping away thinking this thing's taking a fair bit of oil and i'll come down here and It'll just be a river of oil. Anyway, must be a bit of, a bit of moisture being in that oil because it's a little bit creamy. Um, right, we'll uh, see, see what these fuel filters are like, shall we? There's a little bit of, little bit of water in it, not too much, not to be concerned about so much. Uh, so I'll drain that off. While well, I'm waiting for that to drain off, I suppose I can put the bungs back in here. Probably fill itself back up. <laughs> we'll put some gear oil in it, and then it's uh, and then it's then I've then I've done done what I can. Um, but yeah, it's not just a it's not a five minute job replacing the seals. I mean, the seal itself will be. 15 quid to stop the hydraulic oil coming into here don't think it'll be that expensive but to get to it to fairly major strip down um, and then while you're in there you might as replace might as well replace other seals while you're in there um, so yeah it's it's not just uh, something that you come and do on an afternoon it'd be a day's work stripping that and rebuilding it um, right, I didn't undo this one. Why was that? Was it tight? I can't remember. Oh, nice and tea, that. At least it's been getting oil anyway. That's the main thing. It's probably more detrimental to the machine when there's no oil in there because everything grinds to a halt in there, whereas you've got oil going into it so you can keep moving. Right, I've got the water and fuel ball off. Bit of sediment in there, nothing that jumps out to me as being really bad but we'll have a look at this filter head when we get this filter off um, just to note 
just be careful when you're taking these off because as you twizzle this round that wire gets twisted and you snap them wires that's a pain in the backside and please they've changed the idea to actually plugging the sensor in rather than having it on a tail like that much better idea right so these have like a uh, little either rubber or metal this one's rubber and normally when this filter head blocks up it's normally the larger bits of muck that that block it stop the fuel getting to the rest of the machine and that's when your machine starts dying a death so normally this is the first part of call if anybody comes on the phone my machine's cut out or it keeps on dying a death strip this filter head this is the older style where you can actually take the hand primer apart as well um, but yeah just when you're changing this filter just have a look up under here and that is the inlet side you normally see bits of muck and stuff sticking down from there but it looks pretty clean and probably take that off this is coming from the tank so this is direct from the tank this you can see there's plenty of yeah loads of fuel running out of that so i don't think we'll have any trouble getting this machine bled up normally if you if you don't pay any attention to it and you change all your filters and you've got to bleed the fuel up and it won't bleed up it's normally because there's a uh, one of those flaps stuck open um and so you just circulating air around the filter and not being very productive so i've got my new primary fuel filter on i'm gonna bleed it up now um if you're new to the channel i've been saying that quite a lot recently because we've gained a few more viewers than usual um i never pre-fill my fuel filters they always let the let the hand primer draw the fuel through from the tank and then i'm not well, it's just what I've always been told to do is the long story short. I was always told to do it as a boy and I'm just in the habit of doing it now. So with a bit of luck, <laughs> I'm hoping. These can be a devil to try and bleed these things. Is that full or not? Can't tell. Anyway, I'll pump away at this. I've got this filter bled up, no bother. Um, I've got a pump it from here now all the way through the the engine the the fuel pump has got a mechanical lift pump on it so once you've got it started the mechanical lift pump draws all the fuel through um, so it goes from here through the mechanical lift pump it then pushes it through that filter there which is your main filter so i'm trying <laughs> try to pump it now all the way up to there and through that pipe. So all I do is stand here pumping away and wait for it till I can see some fuel running out of that fitting. Right, I've got, I think I've got, I think I've filled that filter. Um, we'll find out when I come and start it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put money on it won't fire off the key first time because I never get it to fire off the key first time. I'll probably chow it over a bit and then go and pump the hand primer, chow it over a bit more. Uh, and it might go. That'd be that'd be on a good occasion. Just a couple of cranks, right? Um, we're doing the pilot filter. Here. Um, so this is filtering the oil going to your joysticks. It's a low pressure. It's about should be around thirty bar. Um, and it's this is the pilot pump. You got your two hydraulic pumps. It looks like one, but it's two. You got rear pump, front pump front pump's closer to the engine um, and that feeds two separate sides of your valve chest um, if it didn't then you would probably find if you only had one pump you would end up um, if you were doing two functions at once you'd find the machine slowed down so if you were to be lifting up and slewing at the same time fed off just the one pump then everything would be dead slow right uh, we're going to change that filter aren't we come on Al right hydraulic return filter is in here he's left <laughs> he's left his impact gun up here so just use that instead uh, 
hydraulic oil is fairly fresh looking, but I think that's because it uh, sort of changes itself as it gets uh, as it gets used. Gosh, that is an old filter. I haven't seen a mesh filter like that for a long time. Bits of stuff in it here and there, just that. I'll have a look at that when it's in here. I don't want to disturb it and pop it into the tank and then two days later he phones us and says, uh, started making a funny noise since you serviced it. What's that then? Bit of stone. I mm, don't know what that is. Don't recognise it off anything. Um yeah. I think it's plastic. Anyway, that filter's doing its job, isn't it? Right, I'll go and get the new filter. Right, engine oil, 27 litres. Fire that in, then we'll start doing gearbox oils. Whew. Getting ready for a bite to eat again. So I had a, a sort of half-used drum and a new drum. Uh, I'm gonna have to break into a brand new drum just to put probably two to three liters in. <laughs> classic, classic. If I'd have known, I'd have just brought two new drums up. Anyway, back down the stairs we go. Hey, it's running. It's um, fired up off the key first time. Yeah, it was four goes. Turn it over, stop, don't put the hand primer. Turn it over, stop, don't put the hand primer. Eventually it rattled into life. It's, uh, hey, it's running nice like, isn't it? That's a steady 800 RPM. And it's, bearing in mind, that engine's done 12 and a half thousand hours. I do really like them engines. They do just sound well. Okay. What a bit of kit that is like. Look at that. Woo. Um, what am I on with now? Gear oil. I'll, uh, I'll go around with the gear oil and then that'll be pretty much service complete. Okay, so we've got a lot of play, I mean, I'll show you on this one, look. That isn't doing anything to those plungers at all. So there's a lot of movement there. So when he's driving this machine, he must be like really doing that. So we can adjust that plate down. So it's just sat on there. And then, uh, yeah, when he's working it, you know, you don't have to do a small movement or a smaller movement to get a larger movement, you see? Whereas that, Gosh, must be a workout, I would have said. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do now. So to do that, I'm just going to loosen off that lock nut. And then that's a, tw I'm sure that's a 27. 27? Yes, I remembered right. And then I'll just screw that plate down until it touches and it holds the lever up. If you screw it down, if you're too keen with it, there needs to be a little bit of play because that is what's telling you... you if you press that down ever so slightly, then you get an oil feed going to your uh, valve chest and you've got a spool selected. So we just want to have it just ever so gently sat there. Ah, yeah. Um, <laughs> having said that, see that UJ there and all the sort of dust, metally dust around it? It's the play in that. See how it's up and down as well? That's where my play is. That play is actually adjusted all the way at the bottom, which I've never seen before. Um, but yeah, that UJ there does just screw out of here and you can get a new one. Don't think they're that daft of money either, but uh, that would cure that anyway. So I would imagine this side would be the same. In fact, it is, look. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to disappoint him. Although he said he wasn't too bothered about it. 
Anyway, right, I'll nip them all back up again, make sure the joysticks are in the right setting for him. Okay, so uh, what I'm doing now is just checking the pressures. So on the screen here, I can show you the front pump pressure and the rear pump pressure. Now, from factory standard, 330 bar is what I'm looking for. And, um, two bar away, which, um, I don't even think I could adjust the main relief valve two bar, it would either be 10 bar too much or 10 bar too little, so that is incredible, really. Um, yeah the levers do have a lot of travel in it which does make it feel i mean the cycle times are right enough or they look right enough um just there's a lot of travel on the joystick but i think it'd be worth doing that uh knuckle in there just it would make it feel a lot sort of a lot tighter yeah i didn't think that would do very much <laughs> um so yeah, I wonder how this thing works then. All right, that's doing the pins. I'll fetch it down here, look. So we've got the rotate here. Yeah, yeah And then I'll rotate around here, look. Open and shut the pincers on there. I how you make that thing grab. Oh, that lifts it up, look. Oh, oh. Uh, I wonder what makes it go open and close. Not that one. Oh, well, the horn works. Oh, that did something. Why was it that? Oh, no, that was that. I do you make that do that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll wait till I've got a, a full induction before I chomp the side of the van out. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Everything's looking pretty healthy. I'm going to go into the, 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 the menu now and reset the service lights. Uh, oil and filter information. I bet this hasn't been done for a long time. Uh, no, it hasn't been done for 1500 hours, so we will enter that, reset that. Uh, we've done that. We didn't do the air cleaner. Uh, engine oil filter, we did do that, yes. Uh, return filter, we've done that. Look how far these dashes have gone nowadays, it's all touch screen. Let's check the error codes. We've got nothing active at the moment. Well, you log about this hundreds. Oh, that was only five. Gauge panel com error, ECU com error, alternator, high speed solenoid valve. Cool. Don't really need to delete anything. Operational hours. Not often I get to sit on a machine that's done this many hours, so it's quite interesting just. Um, yeah, nice basic dash. I noticed the auto idle, auto idle doesn't work, but that could be um, to do with how they've plumbed this in, to be fair, this this is all extra. This, this machine's standard, fresh out the factory, would have only had this foot pedal. You wouldn't have had no, I don't think. No, then. You might have only had one way. Yeah, you probably would have only had one way pipe work on this, so you'd have only had a button. You wouldn't have even had a foot pedal, I don't think. That's definitely not a genuine foot pedal. I know that, I know that much. Anyway, my work here is nearly done. So that is all done, finished. Um, so what all did I find wrong with it? We've got a, a crankshaft oil seal at the fan end. Um, looks like it's leaking or weeping. Um, 
the final drive on this side has got a bit of a, a hydraulic leak into the hub. Um, there's the general wear and tear and all the pins and bushes that you would expect for a machine of this age. Those joystick knuckles would benefit replacement. Pilot accumulator, that would also help with the controllability of the machine. Um, but all in all, for its age, it's uh, it stood up really well, hasn't it? It really has. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not too bad of a digger. Not too bad of a digger. Right. I'm going to go and see the lads and... Uh, Oh, I need to go and pick that trailer up on the way home, so we'll, I'll, I'll, we'll wind the video up when I get back through to Carlisle, maybe. Hey, look at that, two planes overtaking each other. You don't see that very often. <laughs> Must be going to Manchester Airport. I think I'm a closet plane spotter. Didn't even know it. Hey, up, look. They know I like a hat. That'll go down a tree, cup and some air fresheners. Everything that I need for this van. Greatly appreciated. Right, he's gonna move his truck out the way and I'm gonna slip up the road. It's six o'clock now, so gonna be a late finish for a Friday, but it's been good. It's been uh, it's been good to have a chat with them um, and sort of off camera as well. He was telling us how he so I started up with the business with his brother and uh, we can talk about YouTube as well. So it's it's nice to be able to talk to somebody about YouTube from a, from a YouTuber. I wouldn't never say I was a YouTuber, but from a YouTuber's point of view as well, just. Um, so yeah, very good. I've enjoyed myself today and I just want to thank them for having us along. And uh, yeah. Right, ten past six, come on out, we better go. Right, we're back at the ranch. Um, aye, there was a hell of a snow between Kendall and Penrith. Down to two lanes on the motorway. Just been up at the garage there. You can't really see it for them tankers. Um, I have been, I've got some diesel. Ugh. I'm gonna try and get an early start if I can remember to wake up on Monday morning because uh, it's going to be a big day. <laughs> it is going to be a big day. Right, open this gate. Oh, look at the van, look how wintry it looks. <laughs> looks cool. Right, I'll open this up. I left my trailer in this car park rather than all the way around the back because there'd be another couple of gates to open otherwise. Just thought it'd be quicker. Right, I'm going to get this trailer plugged on. I'll get yoked onto this, although I am absolutely miles away. Mm, that little white dot there, I think, is me. Oh, we'll be about right there, I reckon. Go and see. Oh, absolutely perfect. <laughs> I am a genius. Oh, I'll better throw a strap over that. That's the track pin press in there. Uh, could carry it in the back of the van, but it's just getting it in and out the back of the van with a digger. It gets a bit uh, sketchy with the dipper and yeah, it's just easier done in the box. Usually I use it. Usually when I have that, there's somebody else to give us a hand. Anyway. I'll get this on and we'll wind the video up after that. There we go, lights are on. Straps on. Jockey wheel up. Breakaways on. Good. We're good to go. Okay, it is 20 to 9. That's been a day of it, hasn't it? Been too bad. Yeah, thanks for watching then. Hope you enjoyed this video. You have let me know by uh, clicking the like button. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button too. That'd be that'd be grand. I'd really appreciate that. Right, I don't know why I put my seatbelt on because I'm going to get out in 150 yards to lock the gate. Right, 
I will see you on Monday. You'll be seeing this video hopefully on Sunday afternoon. So enjoy the rest of your weekend and we'll see you uh, fresh next week.